Now, Ukraine says Canadian help will be key in the battles ahead. Canada is sending both heavy weapons and humanitarian relief. And Chris Brown, along with Breyer, part of our CBC News team covering Russia's war, this morning he takes us aboard a Canadian military aid flight. Well, this is the cockpit of a Canadian Forces Hercules. Those are the pilots. And here we are in the back. We're somewhere flying over Europe, headed to Poland as part of a regular mission that the Canadian Forces has been doing, bringing humanitarian and military aid to Ukraine. Let's come into the back. Members of the 8th Wing, usually based at CFB Trenton, uh, have relocated to Preswick, Scotland, uh, and they've been flying two Hercules out of there on their mission to bring uh, equipment, not just from Canada, but also from NATO into Ukraine. We can't actually tell you what's in these boxes, uh, but it is a mix of what we're told is lethal and non-lethal equipment destined for Ukraine. It really has been a conveyor belt of trips uh, that these uh, air uh, that this air crew has been making going in, and they seem very, very pleased with their work. The pilots we talked to said they've been in the air about 100 hours every month. They can legally fly up to 120, so they're they're very close to maxing themselves out. Uh, we're on our way to uh, Jesnow, Poland. It's a, uh, a NATO military base. We can't really take any pictures or show any of the activity there, but all of this will be unloaded and from there transported into Ukraine by land, by truck, by train, and then in many cases right up to the front line, of course, uh, the front lines where Ukraine is fighting Russia. Chris Brown, CBC News, on Hercules over Europe. Extraordinary access. Chris, thank you very much. Homes, buildings, entire neighborhoods we have seen leveled in Ukraine through these nearly three months of war. Ellen Morrow is also part of our CBC News team in the country, and she's been speaking with people as they've surveyed the damage in their homes. This is in one apartment building in Irpin near Kiev. What she found was anger, resilience and heartbreak. And you're going to hear more of the people's stories tonight on The National. But here's a preview from Ellen. Imagine this was your home, the place where you hung up your coat, where you lived and loved, feared and dreamed. And this is all that's left. Bits of furniture are all Volodymyr Osadchi could save from his family's apartment of 50 years. He shows us his hands stained by the ash. I curse them for what they have done. Why did they do this to us?